This will be a follow-up on 122, and which was that uh, demonstration of my sort of the second phase of, of uh, what I like to call the Boston School of Start, but it's really the Ingbretson Start, because <laughs> who can do? You're not, we're not part of it two generations ago, so, or three, whatever. And uh, nevertheless, what we have here uh, is an opportunity in this, uh, in this um, uh, little video uh, to, to, to review the start that I've done. And, in other words, talk about this start and, uh, and apply some general, um, um, you know, some, 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 some of the general concepts, you know, sort of in a slow motion way. I was, I was thinking to myself, I, we, did a, we did a play by play, you know, as I sat there last time watching myself, I sort of did, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I realized that there was no color, man. There was no, the color man in the sense of a, of a sports or another event, you know, an Olympic, Olympics events where somebody, a former athlete, will be talking about what we're seeing. So I'm giving you that, the color man. This is the color man side of it. Okay. Um, so let me start this running. And, you know, I'll be part of the picture. I'll be here on the side just like before. Uh, so um, I want to remind you of this, that what we're talking about right now is what I call ocular. Now, I'm going to call it ocular based on Meldrum, Mel, Max Meldrum's use of that word, but ocular impressionism. But impression, that's, that's redundant, isn't it? Impressionism is just working, making the, the, the representational painting you make by working with the relationships of color, value, size, placement, all that stuff, exclusive of prior knowledge, exclusive of head knowledge, about, about composition, of, I'm sorry, about... Um, uh, anatomy and all those things, right? So have that in mind that all we're trying to do is paint the relationships of visual elements. Well, so what are the visual elements? What, right? Well, everybody knows. They're color, their value, and you might say all that other stuff related to it, which is spatial, right? And, but it includes things like the silhouette. Uh, I'm going to pause this just for a second. I'm beginning to make marks on the canvas, and I want to talk about that. So, um, uh, but have in mind that we're talking about some, a very simple thing here, really. And, and, and we're talking about things like shape, a form, 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 meaning the gradation of values. We're talking about the uh, silhouette, the idea when two dark, a dark meets a light, uh, it makes a shape, it makes a pattern, it makes a cutout, uh, or of a, of a greater or lesser, de you know, degree. So all we're doing is talking about the the the, the skill of placing those things right in relation to what nature is doing. Now, everybody knows that we also have to do a transposition. In other words, you can't paint the sun with the yolk of an egg. So we're talking about actually establishing a value scheme. That is, say, the darkest dark and lightest light and figuring out how to live between those two and keep the general tonality of the painting. In other words, don't turn it into an inky painting just to get a light effect, that sort of thing. Uh, I have to get that uh, quote, uh, very nice quote from... Uh, uh, William James onto the um, onto the uh, uh, screen here, if I can. Uh, just just found it, just given to me by uh, Mr. Dunley. All right. Um, so, what you are just seeing now, as I look at this screen right now, you're just watching this idea of broken color, right? Now, I'm showing you. I'll just let it run for two seconds. So, I'm showing you the search for the color note, right? So, what what several things am I doing? First of all, I'm applying red, yellow, and blue through, in and out of each other until I find the note. And I rather insist to myself, because I found that I won't find the note if I don't apply all the colors rather in the search. So you see yellows, you see greens, you see blues, you see rather purples. And these things are all incorporated trying to hunt up a note that will match that note next to it, right? Now, that's a matching thing. Let me pause here for a second. That's a matching thing. Now, what we're really trying to do is paint the relationships of things as you see them, right? Not as we know them, but as you see them in context, right? So in this picture, you might argue there are three grays, one being the, the gray of that cloth down in my hand, which is barely worked on, the other one being the grays related to my hair or my beard, and, the, and then the, the last one is the uh, canvas, the canvas behind me um, in this self-portrait. So, but all of our activity then is, is, is doing the visual relationships, the relationships of visual content, right? Color to color, value to value, 
uh, and uh, intensity to intensity, and of course all the other things related to those things, size to size and all those things. So, But what you really want to understand though is we need to do this search out on the canvas in front of us because that keeps you in the game of watching this to this and watching that to that. Whereas if you pre-mix it down here, you'll start believing I got to own this note and I put it up there, oh, poor me. You know, and even if it wasn't poor me, it's still the wrong approach. <laughs> I mean, even if you got lucky, it's still the wrong approach because you're actually trying to put the, all the note, all that matters in this note is that it plays right to the other several, okay? All right. Now, what you just saw me do also is uh, a standard painting out process, painting out the, with the lights and drawing with the darks so, you can, so you're working wet and duet. I'm not doing that exclusively, and I don't want to get involved in that conversation. I think I had enough of that in the, uh, in the, in the, um, in the previous video. Now, what I wanted to, to mention, though, and I and I left out in the last one. I really had hoped to 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 to, to come up with to think of it, but it was a bunker quote that Gamow offered us at some point, and that is, "Keep on preparing the canvas, and one day, you'll come in and find it finished." Right. So what you're seeing here is this idea of preparing the canvas. What does that mean? Because. Uh, uh, Bunker was one of these guys right at the cutting edge. He was coming out of the Jerome background, but he was right, and he had done some outline based things, but he's here at the cutting edge for him personally of finding his way into this, this next wave of, 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 of painting into drawing um, that Sargent and his friends, you know, his good friend Sargent and, 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 and others around him, everybody was adapting as a better, as a better approach. So, uh, but so this is his conversation, and we assume that it took place, <laughs> maybe rightly or wrongly, uh, after his uh, evolution, you know, after he became uh, more of this kind of a painter. But when he's, when, when, what we mean when we say keep on preparing the canvas is, well, what's to prepare? Well, you know that preparing the canvas is, has to do with big things. It has to, first of all, with the over entire canvas, right? So we're trying to cover the canvas in this start. So you see that we've done that. We've covered the canvas. We don't want to cover the canvas mindlessly, right? So it's preparatory, in, in a preparatory way, you would say, we'd do things like the lightest light and the darkest dark. Maybe that's the lightest light. Maybe something over here, down here somewhere is the darkest dark. And we establish the whole value scheme in relation to that thing as, as color values. So that's the watching the whole canvas, preparing the whole canvas. Well, preparing for what continues to be the question, right? <laughs> Keep on preparing and one day you, there was no what, right? Well, there is in fact. And, it's, and so we talk about this whole conversation about working from the, working from the, the greater to the lesser but we're talking about the greater composition, okay? We're talking about the, 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 the greater color scheme. So the idea of, uh, uh, of uh, that we have all these things on the table at once is all fundamental to our preparation. We're preparing by putting out the colors. I call that setting the palette, right? And then the next preparation is the composition, and that begins to be like the exits, for example. See this exit here? Now these things are crucial to the composition. They need, really do need to be in the right place. And, uh, and so do all the other players that have meaning and, or anything that has any weight at all. It has to be rightly related by, shall we say, the sergeant idea of points and angles. They have to be rightly related to each other as you go along, right? So every one of these significant points, things you've made and chosen to have made, you're trying to get them right to each other. Now, you've chosen to make them, by the way, in the preparation. What you're doing there is you're preparing the, the top end, you're preparing to you're establishing the visual order, you're establishing the top players in their order in relation to each other. Not just the color order and the color chroma, you know, color chroma value, uh, hue, I should say, hue chroma value thing. So um, now let me just let this run some more, but you're getting the idea, right? Um, you're making sure your center of interest, well, all the areas of interest are placed well in relation to each other. So this continues to be an ongoing conversation. And uh, so now I'm going to move this up a little bit. Now, what am, I what am I going to attack here? See, this is a start where you can look at this thing as a whole, and you can say, well, I could say, standing there looking at myself, I say, where is this place least developed? I had to stop. The day was over. It got really dark. I mentioned that to you before. So I have to come back and as it, maybe finish the start. In other words, make sure that I'm right about it being a good, a good composition. Well, if I did, it would be working on something like this area, probably, or this area. The other areas are fairly innocuous, and they have sort of an adequate level of material. But this is one of the busiest areas in the painting, and this is one of the most soggy de de developed ones that has actual content. This doesn't have a lot of content. It's got an adequate level for, of what it has. So what I'm finding now, we have this whole conversation about the backstraggler. And uh, 
the backstragglers, is that thing that in the whole of the thing is least like. And, the, and in our case, when we're, we're still this phase here, we're talking about which area is least like. And that's when you get me working on the head, okay? Because a head is full of little spots. And I'm going to go s speed this up and move them right in there and just evolve some of these spots with you, right? You follow where I'm going with this? Now, this gets to be quite crucial because the series of spots here empower the center of interest, helps you clarify whether you're, how good your center of interest is. Remember, the center of interest isn't just a prominent place, isn't, isn't just the most centered in some way place, but it's also the place that has, for multiple reasons, the most interest, and some of it is just sheer busyness. And this has... You know, that busyness of the nose, the busyness of the eye, the busyness of the, all this stuff related to the mustache, etc. And so it's a fairly busy area, and purposely so, right? Now, this, this area isn't as busy. I mean, this area isn't unbusy, but I would argue that it doesn't come close to what this is up to visually. So if you're trying to keep, maintain your unity, this is the backstrike, the thing least like in that evolution of this start was the area with the, that needed detailed and i don't mean detail in the little way right it just needs it needs more more players it needs to be sort of all there okay so you see me working on that let me pause this again for a second so uh and I, I, this doesn't have to be long I, I, I don't mean for it to be so you understand that everything we're doing now in this preparation is working from the majors right we work from the from the big color relations and we keep them alive and well so they really look strikingly like this color scheme you know, when you hit a note, a chroma, it should look like the light's hitting the shoulder. It shouldn't just look, you know, and, and, and it, you have to actually have the color values, right, for this thing to actually come across. So uh, you're working from the majors to the minors. You're working, for, you're working all over the place at once. One of the things you're seeing me do is I'm working here, then I'm up here. Another point, I'm down here, right, or I'm in here. And then I'm back over to here and here. And you're going to see this all the time. I'm, you saw me over here. You saw me up here. So... That's the idea of being all over the place at once. And when you do an area like this, your job is to take on that area as a, as a new painting, shall we say, unto itself. What I do is I just look at this area and I see what about it already really doesn't go right with my total abstraction. So if there's something big, it's like this thing here, or this effect, or this location isn't right to the whole, I immediately correct anything that's off to the whole, colors, all that stuff, and then I proceed to use this thing exclusively and work in this area exclusively. And so that's a big deal for you guys who are trying to figure out what do you do next, right? Uh, so we're all over the place in this area and we're going to bring this entire area up to a level where it has its own internal unity, but isn't much more advanced than the, than, than the most advanced areas of the rest of the picture, okay? So I'm just bringing the, the, this mass area up rather to what the whole, whole thing was doing so I can rather finish my start. That's the way I'm thinking of it, okay? So you may not think this is, but this is the way the second skin works frequently. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So let me let me just let that run a little bit longer. Um, now, one point I'd like to make is when you're watching watch me work on something, any place, wherever I am, it's all about this thing in a relationship to everything else. And that includes its color value and whatever's happening with its edge, its location, all that stuff is aligning in some way. It's, been, it's being observed. So you don't, I find that I mustn't put down a note and not do the work of relating it in those multiple ways. That's a hard thing for people to fully understand, but you, no matter where you put a spot down, and we do paint by the spot, where you put that spot down, it has all the content. It has the color content, and this is the values, all three elements of the color. It, it has the location content, and it has the effect content, which is that value meets value and, at, and with such and such a kind of an edge or transition. So, uh, and by the way, one of the things you're hearing me say is uh, an edge with a transition. We're not talking about the edge of a head, we're talking about the edge of a dark. And if you understand the ocular mentality, we're talking about masses of dark and masses of light. So that's rather in the direction of what tonalists think like, right? And you see Monet and you see Manet, rather, and you see, well, the guys around Monet, frankly, uh, the Boudins and those guys, you see them working with spots, with masses, orienting around masses instead of drawing outlines of things. So, uh, yeah, I won't say more about that, but you followed that conversation from before. All right. So let's see if there's any more here. I don't have to say a lot more. Um, I just want to check. Uh, yeah. 
So I think that I think that I should say this and let it run again just a little bit. Um, among the other areas of unity, you're talking about this idea of the visual order, right? And that includes this idea of lostness and foundness, right? So foundness, the most highly found thing out there, you know, might be that, the thing that projects to your eye the most. Now, it's not necessarily the sharpest, although it could be. It's not necessarily the most contrasting, but the one usually, typically, you can just feel it coming to your eye, right? So you might feel that one first, and you might feel something like this one second, or this one, and then somewhere out there, not far, hence, this one here. So these are at the upper end of the visual order. So if you say darkest, dark, and lightest lights, I'm going to say to you also, leading effects and, and lostness, okay? Leading effects and least important effects, right? So you're talking about a color meeting a color with, with no contrast, and it's not important to us. And you learn to actually do that. So we don't work on these because we'll lose energy. That whole idea, again, of the, of the neural energy, your brain has only so much energy in the start. I, I'm, I'm sorry, and in the start is where you work on these really big things where you, where you really, really bring your best stuff. And every painting, as you know, has its own limits, has its own uh, sort of a, like a battery. It has it just run, you run out of gas in a painting. And so it, it just makes sense to bring the most important things uh, to the table as early as you can, if you can find an effective way to do that. So, um, and again, you're seeing me ad adjusting notes, not just because I looked at my skin, but because I, when I looked at my skin the way I'd put it down there before, it was way too chromatic and somewhat too red. So I'm adding green and blue and all going through the whole values thing, hunting for that, for that weaker uh, light effect that's, that really was there, that was warming up toward the middle of the face. All relationally, you know, all trying to be right to whatever's out here already relationally. Okay, and I think there's one more point, I think, or maybe I've done it, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the conversation of working from the outside in versus the inside out is a pretty big one, and you've heard me talk about it before. But there's no meaningful idea there for us. We're working from the whole. So when you're talking about the whole, you're talking about the entire, the entire frame, the entire ensemble of visual phenomena, right? So we're talking about the spots of gold and blue and something in the pinkish direction and gray and, and green. We're talking about the dark spots and the middle value spots. We're talking about the lighter spots and the dark. You know what I mean? We're talking about that. We're talking about then all over the place, we're talking about the effects and their alignment, like the exits in the picture, their alignment with each other, and their play to each other. We're, we're observing those things. We're trying to form the, the composition along those lines for these greater ideas. So in this phase, make sure you understand, we mean the whole, we mean every aspect of the whole. So the, dis, the, the placement of all these spots, the relationships of all these spots, uh, in every possible way. So, but really what we're always after is the composition. You never stop thinking about the composition from the beginning to the end. We're not doing realism, putting the figure in the right place and then noodling it up and the composition is what it is. The composition is always in flux or always in a search. Uh, and uh, that's one of the harder parts, I think, for a lot of people to accept about this. But what I found that's so promising about this way of working is that you don't have to wait those 30 days that I mentioned. You remember I was talking about painting a portrait with uh, Gamel and 30 days into it, I still had no idea that it was going to be a good or bad portrait. Well, I long since declined to suffer that way. I just decided I needed to know, especially a sitter of mine needed to know on the first day, whether his portrait was going to be worth staying there sitting for. And that was a huge breakthrough for me. So, um, uh, so, I, so, so, I, so I realized I needed to do something like this to block in a major, you know, a lot of really right notes and enough of the major data without going into anything little to show them what that would look like. So there's these huge advantages to me too, as I said. So I can see now myself in the first day, I know whether I'm gonna finish painting this picture or not. I can tell whether, you know, and I do say to you that, you know, seeing a picture in this two dimensional way, when you see it, you can look through a viewfinder all day, but I find that when I, until I see it in a two dimensional plane itself, not just having sort of tried to imagine it as a two dimensional thing, but when I see it in two dimensions, I can see much more clearly and more objectively the qualities of the composition, the things that need to be corrected and so on. So, um, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. So, uh, good. Um, I hope that wasn't too tedious going through this twice. And if I've missed anything big, I've made a list of them this time. Um, I really do want you to let me ask me something. Be more specific about it, okay? Um, there was, actually, I will, I will say one more thing. There was a conversation that I wanted to bring up and I completely forgot, and that is the relationships of, say, passages like this. We talked about lostness, and there's some areas that are seriously lost. 
uh, like, like this passage where the arm hits the, you can't see anything down there. Or this here, you can't see anything because there's no value contrast. There is a color contrast, and I really want to get color contrast. Whenever there's color contrast, I want it. I don't want edges, though, because edges are a product of values contrast, like that, right? But when I go to paint that contrast, I expect I will, if, if I'm going to paint that, I have to draw it, I have to put it in the right place, I have to make it the right contrast, produce the right effect at the right edge, okay? And that's one thing not to ever uh, fall short of. When you're talking about everything at once, you also mean the finish in the start. So the look of nature in the start. So that thing has the essence of the look of nature. And it's all done in a, an essential way. It's not, in, it's not done in little ways. It's not in a fine way. It's not in a little detail way. It's in a very precise way, though. And that's a hard thing sometimes for people to grasp. But I think you can see what it does for you when you get this edge here. It feels like the edge of a jacket with a shirt and all these things. And I have made no effort to make that. I'm just getting values right and edges right. And if you can just stay on that idea that everything you do put down, every silhouette you do put down, has to be made to look like nature and right in relation to the other things that are already looking like nature. And I am talking about those things, meaning places where shape happens, where silhouette happens and shape is made and so, so on. Okay? I don't know what else I can tell you, so good. I hope, uh, I hope that's worthwhile. Do uh, subscribe, share, uh, and all the rest, and thank you very much.